Yap Verhoeven from who is calling in from Canada. Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome to um, the screening, uh, the post uh, screening dialogue. Uh, we are very pleased to announce that the first screening for Guru in Disgrace back in on, on Sunday last week was fully sold out. It was very well received. Uh, and then we have one more session coming up this afternoon at 1.30. So uh, for our audience who has uh, not already watched the film, you can still buy the online uh, the, the tickets uh, to watch it at the Shaw Cinema. Um, yeah, welcome. Uh, and I uh, would like to invite you to say a few words to open the session. Well, thank you very much. Um, I... Um... Uh, well, I think the, the, the best thing I can say is that this is one of the most difficult films for me. Uh, it has been one of my most difficult uh, works to uh, get it right. And also because um, it's, it's, such, it's something that we all know happens, but we don't really want to talk about. Who wants to know this? We want to trust our teachers and our gurus. And um, that is so important. So it's, it's such a painful subject. And uh, I really felt that in the making too. Yeah. Great. Um, so for a start, thank you, Yap. Um, you know, you, uh, you have made quite a number of documentaries on the topic of Buddhism. And yes. by far, this is the most controversial one. So um, what gave you the motivation to start making this one? Well, the, uh, my motivation was to, uh, because basically in many Buddhist communities, this is a very big happening. Like uh, we, we see the same uh, in the Trumpa uh, uh, followers and in many, many others. So this is not a subject that is just one off. It, it happens and it happens a lot and uh, it's terrible. And everybody talks about it. Within the Sanghas, that is a very main subject. But um, it's, it's also something that's not talked about with, uh, openly, I, I thought. I thought it's just something that people yeah, try to forget and almost try to deny. You just don't want this kind of thing to be true. And I understand that. But I felt that since it was that there are so many people involved in this, and there's so many also people who are really hurt by this, that it is important to give those people a voice. Thank and, you. Thank uh, you. Yeah. 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 Um, to our audience who are joining us now, uh, you are, you can feel free to put in your questions to Yap in the chat box, and we will um, address your questions uh, one by one. So uh, thank you for answering that question. This, like you mentioned, you know, this is something that people might not want to talk about. Um, however, from, from, you know, within the Vajrayana practice, we know that emphasis on guru devotion is very important. Now, do you think that um, it is something that could have contributed to the deviation in behavior, this guru devotion, um, and what could have gone wrong along the way? What, what's your take on this? Uh, well, um, as you see in the film, people come with very high trust and also I think high expectation to a teacher. They, so you want to learn something totally new, something that you know is higher than just you, then um, you want to overcome your ego. So you put away a lot of your old um, ideas and even moral uh, decisions, you put overboard to do that. And in itself, that's a process that is, um, that is encouraged by uh, Vajrayana Buddhist teachers because uh, we have to do that in, 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 in order to, to learn and to see uh, uh, who we really are. So um, we cannot stick to our own uh, old conditions if we go this path. So it is the role of a teacher to do that. And uh, that's why, and I think the people who enter the path understand that quite clearly. And so they take a lot uh, more from the teacher, a lot of uh, behavior or anything they will uh, accept from a teacher, which they never would, from any other person. Yeah. Great. 
So um, it is a very unique practice, like, you know, you're not supposed to question. Um, it must have been very difficult for some of the um, alleged victims. Um, and we can tell it, it was very, very emotional when you were uh, doing the interviews. A few of them were relating their experiences. Now, how was it like interviewing them? And, um, you know, it must have been very traumatic for these people and for them to relieve that um, the, the things that had happened to them. Um, was it difficult to film those scenes and also to, you know, talk to them? How, how did you manage that part? Well, uh, yes, I did have a lot of preparation with all of them. And also I interviewed many people who afterwards said that or in the on the go said, well, after all, I will not, I won't, don't want to say these things even. So, you know, I ended up with just a few people who really wanted to talk about it. And uh, actually, in the very beginning, my intention was to also give uh, the same time uh, in the film to the uh, people who still follow Sogya Rinpoche as a enlightened guru. And uh, I did uh, a lot of work uh, getting the interviews and also getting the Rikpa uh, vision board, which is kind of the, the management of Rikpa, uh, to get some of those. And I got some interviews with those, but those interviews, they all um, uh, kind of, re um, they all said, we, we don't want you to use it. And that was, and in those interviews, and that was very shocking for me, they just uh, bluntly denied what had happened. And they just said that the people who had suffered from this, that they were kind of wrong, or maybe, you know, they had other problems, or they were maybe not really well in the head, or something like that. All kinds of things were su suggested. And so that was very um, shocking for me. And I also said that in those interviews. I said, but that's very shocking to me. So you deny that things like this have happened at all? And they said, yeah, we were not there. We don't believe those people. We don't, I don't know those people and uh, something like that. But I knew that they knew them quite well. So because these were main people in Ripa, like they knew who, who the, you know, that lady had been a nun there for, in the community for, for 10 years and the, the boy also. So they knew each other. So they were kind of lying to me. And I said, come on, if you're lying to me, I cannot use this material. You have to be true. And um, uh, so, but in the end, it was a big frustration for me that they didn't want their voice in the film. There's uh, one lady in Groningen, the young lady, she's still very much a student of Sogyan Boche, and also there was the director of Rikpa Holland in the film. He also, of course, is still really a, a devotee of Sogyan Boche. And uh, yeah, but they didn't really answer my questions, yeah. So it sounded like you had a lot more material and content um, that you have gotten, but you didn't actually manage to put them all into the film. And whatever yeah. we are seeing inside the actual film is only a fraction of what you have managed to get. So um, Yes, that's true. Yeah. Right. It's a pity. Um, what, what do you think uh, could have been, you know, if you have gotten um, the, the, the agreement from these people to, to be included you know, for example, like you mentioned the point of view yeah. from Ripa, um, as well as um, people who spoke to you, denied, and then in the end decided that, you know, they don't want to be featured. If Imagine if you would have uh, been able to include all these information in the film. I, I, I reckon it would be a very long documentary, but do you think it would have given a more balanced uh, perspective to the entire film? Yes, uh, I think so. And I think especially uh, the film would then uh, uh, have been more about the point, like what is devotion? Like, uh, because that's the main question here. Like if we think it's a kind of person that we trust in, we are wrong. If we think, you know, it's his words, we are wrong. Uh, you know, the Buddha has said such things. Like we have to know our own Buddha nature. That's what we have to recognize through uh, this path. And uh, that's what we should be in for. And the devotion that we have is a devotion to the Buddha nature of ourselves and everything and everybody. So if, if that would come out, but these kind of things were not said 
by the RIPA students. They didn't get there. They kind of stayed in the realm of, yes, we have a teacher and he is very much under attack and we want to believe in him. And yeah, that becomes very personal. And I had hoped that they would open up a little bit about that and that we could really have a conversation about what is devotion and in how far do you go uh, in, in these personal uh, beliefs or, or, or in the belief that it is a person. Yeah. Uh, but that didn't really happen. They, didn't, they were not open to this discussion. Yeah. But in your opinion, what is stopping them? Would you know? I mean, we are guessing, obviously, it's very personal. And for some of them, they could, for different people, they would have different reasons. But what do you think, you know, for so many people to not want to be featured, despite everyone knowing that it has happened, and why yes. are they not wanting to do it? Um, would, would, let's, you know, make some well um, guesses, you know. What, what could be the reason? I, I think one of the main reasons is that uh, several teachers came to Rikpa, especially one, I won't call names, but, uh, and they have been uh, uh, preaching in uh, the Sangha that those people who writ wrote the letter, who wrote the open letter, uh, uh, were all um, taken by the devils and their karma would be terrible. And anybody thinking such a thing already would like be in, uh, you know, the special Vajra hells for people who um, attack their teacher. So there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear. There's all those specially made hells for people like me. So yeah. generally these people are um, prevented from speaking out because of fear. Well, I think I, so. yes. I think it, fear is a big, big thing, yes. You know, um, we have a question from the audience. Earlier on, I mentioned about uh, guru devotion, particularly in Vajrayana practice. So we have an audience wanting to know what is your personal view about guru devotion? Well, um, well, I think the latest book of Dzongsa Kyan Zorinpochi is right on. I don't know. Uh, I mean, if you are interested in such a thing, then read that book. Um, and the, the, the other thing is that, uh, no, it's not the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. That's not what I mean. I mean, I mean the, uh, although it's there also in the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, so Yannipochi also explains what devotion is and what the layers of devotion are. That's true. It's also there. But I think that uh, Zongzha Kienze, you know, the maker of the film uh, yep. uh, Lady with the Fangs and the Moustache, he yep. uh, also has written about this uh, subject lately. And uh, well, basically, the view of uh, Vajrayana Buddhism is that you can never, under any circumstance, think, have even one bad thought of your teaching. That's the teaching. And uh, now, uh, if people want to do that, and they can do that fully, and they do grow and um, preferably get enlightened, um, I would only be happy for them. And that if that is their path, and they can do that, that would be wonderful, I think. Uh, and, and there's a lot of buts at the same time. Like, this is a but, this film is a but. It means, yeah what to do in case you already have connected yourself to somebody as a guru and then find out about all this stuff, then what do you do? Yeah. So um, I think what we have to do is we have to uh, really see, look into ourselves and see what devotion really brings. Like devotion is being in awe of the truth and but the truth of ourselves and the truth of everybody. It's not the person. And um, that awe or that uh, kind of lifting feeling, that being one, becoming one with that Buddha nature, which we all have, that is what devotion should be all about. We should always, you know, have our discussions on devotion in the light of that, in the light of what it should really be. And then things will open up and there will be problems and there will be things to overcome and it will be uh, terrible every now and then. Fine, no problem. 
uh, if people, even after accepting what Sylvia Neporti has done, still see him as a great teacher, which I do, by the way, I think that he has been, his teachings have been quite wonderful. And so uh, I don't see that I have to condemn in any way uh, what he's been teaching or what he's been saying. But there's aspects to his personality that we also have to be open to. And people have been hurt by that and have even, you know, run away uh, from Buddhism and from the whole idea of devotion. Now, that's a pity. And that's something that happened and that we have to talk about. And I hope this, is, this film can be a start of such a discussion. Yeah. Great. Thank you. We have yeah. one more question from the audience. It's asking, hi, Yap. Yeah. It is a very difficult and emotional documentary to make. Was there any point where you felt the heavy bur burden of taking on such a topic and wanted to give up? And how did you deal with it? Uh, I wanted to give up all the time, totally, uh, every day. I didn't like it at all. And I really did give up at some moments also. But I felt it's not true to the through the people that have been hurt by this behavior. Because there's many, many, many people and the worst stories are not in the film. It's not, uh, you know, the film just tells some stories. It's just, it's more the idea of something like that could happen. I mean, um, it's been terrible really to make it. And I was in a way very happy that it was over. And afterwards it's very happy because many of my Buddhist friends who are in the Rikpa Sangha are actually not talking to me anymore. So that's really sad. That's really sad. I mean, that uh, uh, is very personal to me. And, uh, but that happens, yeah. And uh, I hadn't foreseen that at all. I really uh, went into it with an open mind, I thought. But they feel they can't even talk with me anymore. So it's very sad. So definitely, I'm all, I would give up right, right now almost, but I didn't. I just did because I felt this someone, I mean, there's thousands of film on Buddhism and everybody in the Rikpa Sangha, everybody in the Trungpa Sangha, anybody in many Sangha are only talking about this. And this doesn't come out in film. It's not right. So that kind of motivated me to just do it anyway. Great. I mean, as viewers, we all, it was also difficult to watch. I can only imagine for you to actually make it, but we are glad you did. <laughs> we are glad you well, did. Yeah. We have well, uh, I, 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 I didn't want to make anybody sad. I hope that you find some light in it, basically. Well, definitely. I mean, um, like you said, sometimes it's difficult, but it's something that you have to deal with. So um, I think a lot of our audience would be mature enough to um, manage that emotion. So, but we really appreciate this film. You know, earlier on, we talked about people who do not want to um, talk about uh, what happened to them. And we have an audience asking, do you think because these people believe that, you know, karma, um, open, close quote, would, you know, eventually um, take care of these matters so they they think that you know it's okay to not uh, deal with it on their own and just let things happen and therefore for them um they just don't want to talk about it do, do you think that it could be also um how they feel yes yes i can imagine that yes um and uh, there's many people who feel like we just left rikpa uh, like before the open letter came out, before everything came out in the open, many people knew about it or half knew about it and they just left and nobody wanted to say anything. So there's many, many people like that who feel it's a very bad karma to do it and uh, to bring it out and karma would uh, happen on its own anyway. So why do anything? Yeah, that's, that's how many people feel, yes. Yeah, I guess there would be many, many point of view and coming from different perspectives. So it's only natural. So uh, we have a, a viewer that would like to thank you for your courage in taking up this challenge to make the documentary. Oh, and we would, so <laughs> and um, he or she would like to know whether working on this film has affected your own practice or your own understanding of the Dharma. Uh, well, um... I think it's done two things. It's, it's shown me, first of all, that such an organization, such a big organization as RICPA 
has many, um, you know, other aims and other interests than just bringing the truth out. There's also the interest of keeping the possessions and uh, keeping the organization going and all that. So that's one thing that I saw much clearer than I saw before. But for my own practice, I think it, it kind of made me uh, reflect a lot on what devotion is and why we should use it as a path or uh, uh, yes, uh, it really, the, the talks I had with people who left from Aripa really clarified those things for me. Yes. Great. Um, so um, apart from that, just to add on to this question uh, about how um, it has affected your point of view, um, has this also given you um, any unexpected discovery about yourself in, in the midst of making this documentary? Um, apart from your existing understanding of the Dharma, what about um, the, the, the uh, what, what, moving forward, you know, how, how, how would that have um, made things different from, for you, you know, for your practice? Um, I think that uh, it's clarified my practice a lot. It's clarified to me that um, I have, like we all, I have to know for myself what my nature is and what the, the Buddha is talking about. And that it's not about, in the end, the part of devotion is not about following a guru, a person, a certain person. So I think it clarified that a lot for me. And it, in a way, uh, empowered me uh, in the sense that I know that I know. And that knowingness is my guru. And that can be reflected in many gurus. I'm very happy, you know, if that is so. And I look for them and I, I visit them. But it's not about that. It's about knowing for myself. Great. Right. You know, um, towards the end of the documentary, we, we see that there are some comments from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, as well as uh, Tenzin Palmo. So were yes. these two um, guest appearances um, put in uh, to, um, to have some kind of a conclusion? Because after all, there's a lot of speculation. We have people who think that it happened. We have people who think that it did not happen. And right. therefore, you feel that it's important to have uh, the point of view and the pers uh, perspective from uh, very well-known um, personalities like His Holiness and Tenzin Palmo. Uh, that your yes, uh, that is so. There's very few teachers in the Buddhist world who have said anything against, have said anything against Soviet Rinpoche, because especially in the Tibetan culture, and especially between teachers, that is not done. At least maybe in personally, but not in uh, for a, for public, not not publicly. You would never say anything bad about another teacher, uh, uh, generally speaking. And so that's a very strict uh, tradition. And uh, I respect that in itself, it's okay. But it means that um, the, the people who suffer from such behavior cannot go anywhere. So I thought it is good to show that there's also, you know, like first people like the Dalai Lama and people like, uh, you know, like really people who have done meditation, who have followed the path, who see this as a problem and would try to also do something about it. And I, I think it's important to know that, that in the Tibetan tradition, although 98% would not talk out, there are one or two who will. And uh, I thought it's important to show that. Yeah. Good. Thanks for confirming that. That was what I thought as well. And yeah. so we would um, wrap up this session with one last question. You know, at the end of the day, with uh, such a, a heavy topic and uh, a very, very intense uh, documentary, what is the message that you would, you would like your audiences to take away? Well, um, it's not one message. It's just, you know, there's so many points in the film, so many things to think about, like the background of Soviet Empire, where he comes from, the Tibetan culture thing, all that. I think, um, I hope this film will make people a little bit aware of such things and maybe start to think about one or two of those uh, 
uh, you know, uh, subjects. So it's more, I don't know, I think it, I just bring something in the open. And it's not me who brings it in the open, it's actually the people who wrote the letters and who speak in the film will bring it to the open. And uh, so uh, I'm, I'm thankful to them that they uh, gave me the trust to do that through me, but actually I'm just the messenger here <laughs> in a way. So um, uh, I, I feel that, uh, that it's great that they had the courage to do it. And they also themselves said that it helped them to just say it, just speak it up so that it doesn't become some kind of super deep traumatic stuff. It's important to talk about these experiences. It is. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, we have one more compliment from an audience to say that, uh, yeah, it sounds like the process of making uh, this film has been very difficult, but uh, thank you so much for facing your own um, challenges and not give up, and, uh, for, and thank you for your sharing today. So, um, would you have any last words to add before we conclude the session? Oh, wow. I, I just wish that everybody has a really happy day after seeing this film. Just <laughs> let's not be sad about it. Just let's just, you know, go uh, uh, straight towards the top to speak with. Uh, uh, I mean, let's just. Um, um, pray and hope that we are fine and that everything will be fine and we will just go from that point. So let's. Uh, let's forget about the whole thing and go forward in our understanding. Yeah, I think for a lot of the audiences as well as the, this Buddhist Film Festival committee, um, it wasn't meant, I, we don't approach the film from the, from the, from the anger where we, we will you know, get too engrossed and get upset. But like you say, it is meant to uh, make you think uh, there's a lot of things to consider, you know, that um, we do not shy away from talking about uh, not so nice things. I and mean, these are very real and it's something that we need to face. And um, no, I don't think it's making us sad. We are going to have a happy day, like you say. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's very good because um, we really are very thankful for uh, to you for bringing us this film because it is first and foremost thought provoking. It is very insightful and you dare to confront this topic that uh, like you mentioned, a lot of people do not want to talk about and I think it's important. Uh, and it's really up to the individual. You can choose to avoid, continue to avoid, or you can take this opportunity, you know, having this film to help you to consider certain things. And I think in, in the process, it will help us grow as well. So thank you so much for bringing us Guru in Disgrace. We really appreciate that. And we also like to thank you for taking time to join us today. And thank you to our audience for joining us on a Saturday morning in Singapore. Uh, thank you. And we have one last dialogue coming on later on at uh, 11 o'clock in Singapore. Um, this it would be for my year of living mindfully. So for audiences who are already here, please stay on to join us for the last session. And thank you. Thank you, Yap. Thank you to everyone. Thank you for your support. To thank you very this much. Film with for Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good time. Bye. bye. Okay, we have stopped the recording. Okay, okay, good. Great. Thank you.